Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're gonna have a look at what the differences between QuickBooks UK and QuickBooks USA are currently. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a Chartered Accountant, Certified UK Trainer, and also that QuickBooks guy. Okay, in this video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. And what we're gonna do is concentrate on the differences between QuickBooks UK and QuickBooks USA. The reason for that is sometimes it gives a good indication of what to expect in the UK product. And as a quick preview of that, I know that there's already one of the announcements that's here for the UK, already live in the US product, so we can see how that looks. Let's have a look at it now. Okay, so let's bring up both forms of QuickBooks. On the left-hand side, we've got QuickBooks UK, and on the right-hand side, we've got QuickBooks USA. Now, first of all, just looking directly from the QB accountant point of view, you'll notice that from the American side of things, we have extra element in what we would call the client list. The reason for that is in the American version, it gives you a lot more data. And also in the American version, you have the opportunity to file actual tax returns in the product itself. So straight away, we can see that from the US version, we have that pro tax integration, which means that you can file corporation tax returns and possibly even personal tax returns as well, directly from a Intuit product. Another big difference is when we go to add client, you'll see some major changes in the way that is the subscription. So on both the UK and the US model, we both have the opportunity to do subscriptions and then we get to do wholesale versus direct discount, but the pricing is hugely different. First of all, self-employed is still there, but then we lose the simple start functionality in the US product. We still have essentials, we still have plus, but the main big difference is advanced. We don't have advanced functionality in QuickBooks UK just yet, but we know that's something that probably will start coming at some point in time. Also, it's interesting that you have the option for a standalone payroll. Not only do you have the option for standalone payroll without having the rest of the subscription, but they don't just have the two that we have, and then they have an option of payroll elite. But here they have a personal HR advisor and more worker management solutions. So from the payment options, that's really interesting because we've got those extra tiers that we don't have in the UK model. We know that, or we've heard that there are rumblings of the advanced features coming over to UK at some point, so we can expect to see them, but we've definitely not heard of anything to do with the payroll and having some extra features within payroll. That'd be an interesting one to keep an eye out. If I jump into a client, the dashboards are looking pretty similar at this point in time. Um, along the very top here, we seem to have extra elements here though. We've got the My Expert options, and that's basically live within the product is the opportunity to talk to an accountant or what also is going to be available is that whole virtual bookkeeping is in the US at the moment. So that's where the My Expert page comes into. And on the left hand side though, when we look into what's going on in our left hand panel, on ours, the big difference is the month end review is live. So we've been teased about the month end review. This is one of the summer products released we spoke about in a previous video, but as you can see, it's live within the product now. So this gives us a good indication of what to expect when it comes live over here in the UK. As you can see, we have what month we're doing at the top, so that looks quite useful, so we get to choose which one it's going to go. We have transaction review, account reconciliation, and then final review. So there's a nice little workflow here that's given us an opportunity to see how we're doing in our working, in our month end review. Before you start, make sure your book's up to date so you get the chance to see if there's any bank transactions, that's useful. It will let you know if there's any uncategorized transactions at all, and if there's any transactions without payees. And I quite like that actually is going to be quite a powerful one because that's going to give us an opportunity to be able to go in and put that there. Unfortunately, we've got no data in this particular client, so we don't know how that works, but let's quickly populate it with some data. Okay, now we've got some data in here, we can have a look exactly what happens. So I purposely put this transaction here where it's got no uh, no vendor or pay payee in American terms, and it's got uncategorized expense. Now what it gives me option to do is looking at to do, waiting or done. So from this page here, I can go into the expense if I need to, and it brings it up for me, I can make the adjustment. So let's see what happens if I do put a payee to it. You'll notice when I go back to it, 
that's now fallen off that list, but it still is a transaction that has uncategorized expense. What I can also look at doing by the looks of it is to do waiting or done. So if I go to the done, and then once I've changed this account and I go into categorize, let's put this against the reconciliation discount. All right, so I've cleared both of them off, so that looks good. Additional items, keep track of other issues. So check for personal transactions, and then you can see if they're, they're there or not. Review loan payment and record cash transactions. Once you're happy with that, when you go to account reconciliation, it's then going to tell you very, very similar to the view that we have in our overview section. It's going to say which ones are done. Nice. And you even get the opportunity to add some additional items and you can link that through as well. So reconciliation loan accounts, reconciliation recon review reconciliation reports take you straight to the reconciliation area. So I quite like that. And I like the added ability here. Oh, and also, and I only just noticed this, you have the option to add in your transaction review, you could add to look at links there as well. So that means you're gonna be able to customize this to your heart's content. Final review gives you opportunity to look at the balance sheet and then look at the profit and loss and review. I see, and then you can put the done status here to say that you've done them, that actually works quite well. So that gives an indication of what the month end re review is gonna look like. I mean, there's still some things that are a little bit confusing there. Category you get to go to to do waiting or done. So at what stage have you got in that reconciliation? but I haven't yet been able to find out which accountant's done that and where the audit trail of that's gonna be. So just to see if I go to audit trail, does it tell me that's gonna be an interesting one because you'd want really from a month end review. If I go to my final review, I can see they've been done and that's good. Okay, the other things have been added differently. So if I go down the list here, we've got the overview looks pretty much the same. I don't see any adjustments there, but it's interesting that we in the UK have the business performance and America doesn't. So that's interesting. Isn't Know, we're kind of almost a step ahead in that that stage we have that business performance analysis which we found really useful for our client but it looks like from a client overview point of view in the US that's all they have when you look at the overview though it looks exactly the same in the US versus the UK so we've got exactly the same data being brought in which is great banking wise uh, banking screen should look very similar as well Spencers, we have exactly the same Sales, we have an extra one, we have an overview for sales. So that's quite nice. Within the sales section, we have what we call the overview screen. And that's gonna give some way in which it's like a dashboard just for your sales section. So in here, we get to see some extra bits of information and that just gives you some more confidence, I suppose, in how the data's going through. Some ways of being able to kind of improve your sales and improve how that's looking. America hasn't got cash flow yet, which I'm really surprised at. So in the American version, it doesn't like, look like they've got the cash flow module yet, which you know, quite surprising, but that's a good good thing for kind of showing from a UK point of view, how our features are starting to come into play independently of what's happening over in America. Projects, I expect to see exactly the same. We kind of took our projects directly through them. And one of the things I do like is this whole option of workflows. So in the US, it was a actually a QuickBooks Lab feature workload last time I, I checked it, so about six months ago. Now it seems to be directly in the product itself, so it's something they're pushing for. Now what workflows is effectively is, it gives you an opportunity to do automation, and automation can be hugely critical to certain clients. So the idea here, if we have a look, is about creating workflows to when certain trigger points happen. So we have here maybe an invoice approval process. Automate create a task and send a notification when a new invoice needs approval. What about payment received, overdue invoice memo, bank deposits reminder. Basically, if something happens in QuickBooks, you can set a workflow to automatically go out and sort that out. And you can also create a brand new template if you need to. But even just the invoice approval option will be quite useful. That means that if an invoice is greater than zero, then we can set it to automatically go off and need an approval before we can send it. And I quite like that. Workflows is definitely something I'm excited for. If you've ever used Zapier or anything along those sort of lines, it's very similar in that. Zapier's whole idea is that you can say that when a certain trigger point happens, it does something. And, it, and Workflows is effectively taking that directly in. Then as we go along the bottom, we've got reports. Let's just see if there's any difference in reports. In America, they have integration with Fafum directly in there. So you have some more expert reporting options um, and it, get, it all depends on which version of quickbooks you pay for but apart from that they are th still there so that's great and then the mileage i assume is going to be exactly the same which it is let's before we look into the settings though let's look into our new batch transactions now batch transactions is only for advanced users and it is something that might be quite useful for us going forward in the uk if we ever get that functionality so what batch transactions designed to do gives you almost like an excel 
version of it and it gives you a chance to put lots of information in quickly and you can even import a csv to put that information in there so batch actions should be something that make it really easy for us going forward okay normally we find big differences there when we jump into our settings so from a settings point of view we have manage workflows is because the workflows is there order checks we will never have that's fine import data the same although interestingly on the us version versus the uk import data is significantly different so in the uk we have a much bigger variety of items we can bring in and also it seems in the american version it's quite buggy so when i look to import the invoices for example it's going to tell me i can't quite do that yet because i've enabled sales tax whereas in the uk i can import no matter if i've turned the vat on or off but i suppose of the us though because they've got that batch of actions functionality they don't rely as much on importing because you can actually import the batches directly into quickbooks as well backup companies um an option on the us version we don't get smart look is one that we both have and then there's k so k center is their version of the my accountant portal so let's just see if there's anything in the quickbooks lab so it looks like and this is the first time for a long time this has happened both our quickbooks labs are exactly the same so we've both got community reports no uh, import style and that cash flow dashboard widget randomly for us they don't have the cash board the other option then is going to be in account and settings this is where we do tend to find some little extra bit so straight away their billing is completely different so from a billing and subscription you have a lot more options here we've got a uh, live full service we've got the live bookkeeping setup we've got checks and supplies QuickBooks Online Payments built directly into here and they promote T-sheets directly from here as well. One newer feature that's come through lately is the fact that you now need to allow billing transfer from uh, to your accountant. So now the client has to opt to allow that as opposed to we just been able to take over billing like we had done before. They also have a usage. So they're a lot more strict in terms of usages and chart accounts. Then if we look at just make sure we didn't miss anything in company, but I don't think there would have been anything. Nope, company's exactly the same sales so one of the big ones one of the big ones we knew about sales before was the price rules so the idea of price rules gives you the opportunity to allow product discounts and gives you opportunities to really be clever about the way that you offer um, different different uh, price so price rules is all about stating that if you buy a certain product maybe buy two a product you then have the option to go in there custom fields have been updated in the us option now custom fields and it, this was used to be in quickbox lab now your custom fields you get to dictate what type of custom fields it is and then you can say and start putting some special information in there so maybe you want the type you want it to be basically case sensitive so that they'd have to put in a particular item there to put it through so it, it makes those custom fields really useful for you and means that you can get the information you need to get from it so that's nice yeah, so in the us you have the option to do late fees and automatically apply to overdue invoicing everything looks exactly the same in expenses which we kind of expected and then when it comes to advance doesn't look like we've got anything new jumping in here automation wise they've got one extra what have they got they've got that could be quite a nice one couldn't it uh, automatic invoice unbuild activity so basically if you create an invoice you have the option do you want to bring the unbuild activity directly in and that's it that's a quick look at the difference between usa versus uk from there it looks like there's quite a few things on uh, on its way do comment below if there's anything you want me to look in any more detail with the us product but as you can see there's some exciting things that are probably on the way and it's nice to see how that month end review really is going to affect and how it's going to look aesthetically when it comes over here with part of the summer product release if there's anything else you want to learn about quickbooks online this is the right place so make sure you subscribe and tick the channel and also make sure that you put any comments down here if you want me to look at anything else to do with this my name is aaron and it's been a pleasure doing this video for you and i will see you in the next video bye for now Yeah, 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 yeah